Hi everyone, welcome to day 13 of Admin of Code 2023. Today we have arrived at Lava Island from Spring Island, having fixed the springs there and jumped to this current island. Today we have to deal with a bunch of mirrors, so I'm going to be explaining my approach to the puzzles. Uh, my code, if you want to check it out, is in the description. Linked is the GitHub repository, which contains my solutions to all of the days. But first, let's see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. So today we're in a valley of mirrors and we need to navigate our way out by using our knowledge of reflections. Basically, we're surrounded by a map of ash and rocks, which are dots and hashtags, just like yesterday. And <clears throat> there's a number of mirrors in the valley which reflect the ash and rocks pattern. So we don't know where the mirrors are. All we can see is the pattern of ash and rocks, but not all of them are like actual ash and rocks. Some of them are reflected. So we're given a bunch of maps, which are square grids of dots and hashtags. And our job is to figure out for every single grid what the line of reflection is. So let's take a look at this uh, example map. So we have a bunch of dots and hashtags, and you can see there's a line of symmetry roughly down the middle. So there's a vertical line that stretches uh, on the left side of these characters. So there's a vertical line right there that divides the map in half. It's not exactly symmetric, so there's a little bit more on the left hand side, but we ignore any part that doesn't have a, uh, I guess, corresponding mirror image. So if we split this map down the middle along this line that I'm pointing to, um, then we get two halves, which are mirror images of each other. They're exact mirror images. If you take like this point and you reflect it over the line, you get this point and they're the same. So we have to make sure that all of the points on one half are reflected on the other half for our line of reflection. So our job is to find out what that line of reflection is. Uh, it could be vertical, it could be horizontal. And our job is for every single map, find the line of reflection. If it's a vertical line of reflection, take the number of columns before that if it's a horizontal line of reflection, take the number of rows above it and multiply it by 100. For each of those numbers, basically just add them up for all the maps, and that's our job for part one. So how do we find these lines of reflection? What I did was instead of writing separate functions for checking for horizontal lines and vertical lines, I just did one, uh, which checks for horizontal lines of reflection. And basically, I just took the transpose of the grid, which if you don't know what transpose is, it's basically just reflecting the entire thing about the line like x equals y. So we're flipping the rows and the columns, and this turns all of the horizontal lines into vertical lines and vice versa, which means we can use the same function and write less redundant code. So I start out with this function called isHoriz, which takes a grid of dots and hashtags as well as an index i, which is the line of reflection that we're trying to check. So i is going to be the index of a row, and we're going to check the line which is right below this row. So if i is 0, we're going to check the line right below uh, row 0. If it's 1, i is 1, the line right below i equals 1, and so on and so forth. So once we settle on a horizontal line that we want to check, this function will tell us whether the map is symmetric around that line or not. And how we do that is we basically go through every single column. So that's this variable j. For every single column, we're going to check all of the rows. Um, this is probably more than we need to do, but I'm doing it anyways. It's not that slow. It's um, runs pretty fast on modern hardware, so wouldn't worry too much about it. Anyways, for every single column, we're going to go through every single row and check that the current point has a mirror image and that it's the same um, as it's the same character as uh, the original point. So the original row is k1, and the mirrored row is going to be i times 2 plus 1 minus k1, which is the original row. And you can see that because let's say we're taking this row, uh, the line right below this row, which is row number 2, so because it starts from 0, so 0, 1, 2. This is going to be i equals 2, and we want, for example, row 2 to match with row 3. So we're going to do 5 which is i times 2 plus 1, since i is 2. 5 minus 2 is going to give us 3. Similarly, uh, if we want row number 1, which is the row above this one, the mirror image is row 5 minus 1 equals 4. Again, that's just that same number 5, which is i times 2 plus 1. So subtracting the current row number from i times 2 plus 1 will give the mirror row number, and we want to check if the characters are the same uh, for both of those rows in the given column. If not, then we're 
not good. So this line is not a line of reflection because there is like at least one cell that is off and we can return false. Otherwise we return true. We also do have to check when we're doing the row comparison thing that the mirror image is within bounds because again, there might be some portions of the grid that uh, are sort of not matched up and they they lie outside um, the mirrored part. So we need to check that when we're doing this checking thing, um, the row that we're checking is actually within the grid and that's what these two lines are for. Once we have this function, we have a really easy way of detecting for every single grid whether a given line of reflection is actually a line of reflection or not. So what we're going to do is loop through every single grid and check all the vertical lines and all the horizontal lines using these two for loops. What this first for loop does is it loops through all the horizontal lines, checks if any of them are lines of reflection. If so, then we have a horizontal line of reflection. And then we take the transpose of the grid, so we flip the vertical and the horizontal axes, check again for any horizontal lines because these were the original vertical lines. And if any of those are lines of reflection, then we know there's a vertical line of reflection at index j, where j is the uh, I guess, row slash column that we're iterating through. Once we have that, uh, one of these variables is going to be not negative one. We initialize both of them to negative one just for defaults. The one that is not negative one, uh, we're going to add to our answer. And this code is a little bit confusing. I could make it more explicit, but essentially what we're doing here is one of these variables is negative one, which means that variable plus one is going to be zero and we can ignore it. And otherwise, that variable plus one will be precisely the number of rows or columns before it. So for example, if we have row number zero, uh, this is going to be the line right below it. And there's exactly one column above it. So we need to do zero plus one equals one. So there's some off by one stuff. That's why we have the plus one. So this function will do exactly what we want, takes in the grid, spits out the summary uh, of the grid as given by the problem. And we just add up all of the summaries for all of the grids using some clever uh, splitting mechanism. And that's going to be our answer. Part two, unfortunately, we run into one of the mirrors, and it turns out that some of the mirrors are smudged, which means that inside every single grid, there's exactly one point that is not what it's supposed to be. So, for example, in this first grid, um, this character, which is a hashtag, might actually be a dot. So every single grid, there's exactly one. There's guaranteed to be exactly one cell that's off. It should be the reverse of what it is. If it's a dot, it should be a hashtag. If it's a hashtag, it should be a dot. Our job now is to find every single line of reflection for every single grid again, and it should be distinct from the first one. So there's some cases where the original line of reflection is still a line of reflection, but we want a new line of reflection, which can be obtained by changing exactly one of the cells in the grid. And it turns out that this is always possible. We're guaranteed that this is possible, and I verified it uh, through the code. So how do we do this? Well, we can reuse the functions that we had for part one. So we have this new function, which is summary two. Actually, I refactored summary um, this original function a little bit by making it return a tuple, uh, which is the horizontal line of reflection and the vertical line of reflection. This is to accommodate for the fact that there might be multiple, and we want to make sure that we detect all of them. There's also this additional parameter avoid, which is an optional parameter. And what this does is we can give it a row and a column or like a vertical and a horizontal line that we don't want to be present um, when we're checking. And this basically allows us to specify that we don't want the original line of reflection to still be there when we're doing a new checking. Anyways, I'll explain that in a little bit. So I just refactored this function a little bit. The essential um, idea is still the same though. This new function summary two is new. And what we do is we go through all of the cells in the grid by iterating I from zero to N. So all of the rows and all of the columns, check every single square in the grid. Uh, we're going to reverse the value or the character in that grid by making a copy of the original grid and then changing the character. If it's a hashtag, we're going to make it a dot. Otherwise, we're going to make it a hashtag because it was a dot originally. And what we're going to do is we're going to compute the uh, the summary of this new grid. And this summary, again, will be a tuple, which is a horizontal line of reflection and a vertical line of reflection. What we want to check for is if tweaking this cell in the grid, this cell ij, has actually changed the summary um, to a significant amount. So if it makes the summary negative one, negative one, meaning there's no longer a line of reflection, then this is bad and we don't want to care about that. So that's what this value is checking for. It's checking if the new summary value is negative one, negative one. In that case, there's no lines of reflection at all. So we're going to ignore this option of IJ. Otherwise, if it's the same as the original lines of reflection or the original line of reflection, that's also bad. We want something to change. So we also ignore that. Otherwise, something has changed. We've obtained a new line of reflection and we can uh, basically tell what it is because we specified 
using this avoid parameter that we don't want to check for the original lines of reflection, meaning we want to look for a new line of reflection. And that's what these two lines are doing over here is checking for all of the vertical lines that were not, or all of the horizontal lines that were not doing the same horizontal line as what we originally had. And for all the vertical lines, we're not doing the original vertical line that we already had. So once we compute that, we have our new lines of reflection and this allows us to basically just find the new lines of reflection and summarize the new value. Basically, if this tuple has not a negative one in the horizontal place, then we know something has changed in the horizontal line of reflection, and that's our new line of reflection. We need to multiply the number of rows above it by 100, just like in part one, and otherwise the column has changed. So we have a vertical line of reflection and we add one to that index to count the number of columns before that vertical line. So the rest is the same. We return the number, which is the summary of that grid. And this function encapsulates all of that lo logic for us. We go through all of the grids, compute the new summary, given that one of the cells is smudged. And that's going to be our answer. In case you want to check out my code again, it'll be in the description. There's a link to my GitHub repository, which contains my solutions to all of 25 days of advent of code. So make sure to check that out. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching day 13. I hope you gained something. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 14.